next section, Valdo uh, Road, is not involved by three of the conditions which around the rise and rise of the world's And <coughs> Mike has uh, information there concerning the widening. Sidewalks, bike lanes, because more subdivisions are coming. 
you're going to have people walking, basically. Not without getting right away. We can't, we can't get, we can't get right away. We can't get sidewalks and bike lanes in there uh, without getting right away. We would have to, we would have to get right away. Because I just know we, we, we anticipate other subdivisions and people going to be walking. If you, if you go to the chamber, you're going to have kids playing or going up to the store or something like that. So I'm just saying. If you go to James Road, James Road is a 90 foot right away. It took that 90 feet to get the curb together. I mean, to get the sidewalk in there. So can you do, <clears throat> talking about section one and section one only, but would you have any heartburn about looking at the numbers for doing a pile line with no curb and gutter and no sidewalk? You can't get drained in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. either way, we've got to have you have to put curbs in there. Right. In order to work with existing right. Sure. Yes, yeah, that's right. And if, you're going, if you go to, if you try to go with a, uh, a four lane or five lane road with, uh, with ditch sections, you're going to be out there 120 foot right away. To be legal. Not, not like, uh, say if we went with a four lane with, with sidewalks, so what you did the price of looking at the end. Your, your only issue with the four lanes with the sidewalk mm -hmm. is the rear end collisions when people are sitting there, sitting there trying to turn left into a subdivision or turn left. They don't have any place of refuge to get out of the, the track coming behind them. I mean, that's, your, that's your issue with, with, that, with, that, with that volume of road. Uh, that's, that's what you see mostly when your collisions are your rear ends where people are stopped and making that left hand turn. And you say that the speed limit's going to change to 45. That's right. I mean, because I'm thinking like Venus. Venus has sidewalks and all of that. I'm just, just throwing that out there. Venus has sidewalks, but Venus also has that. Uh, they have the concrete median in the middle uh, that will, that get, that has dedicated places you can turn. Uh, if you do a, if you do that, Venus can't. Venus is long. Venus is 120 feet. So if you're not a waste of concrete in the middle of it. So I've really watched traffic. Same thing with James Road. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. I've, I've watched traffic in that area a lot, probably a lot more than I care to admit. But having an office on 41 and, and spending a lot of time on Valdell, here's my concern, is that right now we're kind of moderate, we're kind of, kind of dealing with that traffic before it gets to North Carolina Road. And what I mean by that is, North Carolina Road flows okay for the most part early morning. I'm just concerned that if we five lane everything and we make these improvements to Valdez, are we just basically putting more cars on North Carolina Road a lot faster so that everything's bottlenecking up at Country Club? Because right now it's kind of paced out. Even though it's not ideal, all those cars aren't getting on the North Carolina Road at 750 in the morning. If you look at the numbers that Mike has projected based on the development, you're basically doubling the number of vehicles currently yeah. out there. And I would encourage you, if, whichever direction you go, and certainly with that intersection, that you have a conversation with the city of Valdosta so that you don't just create an impact, on, a negative impact on them without any consideration. And we're just moving on the fast road to the six lane now. That's what I was going to say. There has been discussion up from the DOT folks about adding additional lanes on North Isles Road. So that's, that could be a project down the road from the DOT standpoint as well. And all of that portion of North Isles Road there is DOT. That's correct. All of that is. All the way up to where it turns off at cash purchase, then that becomes county at that point. 40, 41 runs from the interstate Correct. down to uh, Perimeter Road. That's, that's state. Right. That's state. That section of North Road from the interstate to uh, Perimeter Road is state. Maybe. Mark, what did you say? Uh, why did you say it's going to put that aquatic center? Well, they have some property off of Valdez. That's why I, I referred to the back mm -hmm. <coughs> or sidewalk to be honest with you, in the center. So I think also the question is, Mike, do you have eight and a half million dollars? Uh, Mike has none. The problem is, how do you intend to spend your money? Well, it's not our money either. <laughs> so I'm just saying that I'm familiar with all of these. I've had conversations. And in fact, the question for Mike is, 
do we already have applications for the from Ackley or whatever it's called? Valdell, Val 61, their 60 lots is under construction. Uh, Owens and Weaver, the 123 lots is in design. They closed on that uh, two weeks ago. They, that property closed and uh, Owens and Weaver now own it and Lowell is in design. Uh, 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 uh they have a uh, conceptual site plan that we anticipate them to be on the next agenda or the uh, excuse me, the April cycle uh, for the county commission for rezoning. Right, we fully anticipate them being there on your April meeting for, for a rezoning. I don't know about Matco, but I know the Dasher development is Matco just Matco just hired a uh, hired someone to uh, to come in and uh, stump it, cut it, clean it up, uh, so it is so it can be marketed. That 38 acres uh, uh, there at the it's right there at the intersection of North Isles Road and Valdez. They they have uh, that they have hired a uh, Contractor because because they're working on getting land service permits and full stuff. And then uh, and then the last one, uh, Howard Dash, he's got 290 uh, acres, probably uh, 230, 240 are developable, rest are wet. and the rest are wet. But uh, in talking to his consultants the other day, he's going. Uh, probably going to go for a, a mixed use between PD and R10, and, and you know just say even if you're 200 uh, 200 acres uh, on a PD, uh, you're looking at at least four lots to the acre. And all this is served uh, or would be served by uh, county water and sewer. County water and sewer. So I think that we need to, when that first application comes in on these 239 lots that's conceptual right now, we need to keep in mind that as people come to us about traffic, that we're ahead of it in making preparations for how to deal with that traffic. So, other than money. Other than money. <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about money. <laughs>
is certainly it's going to require desale lands more than likely to yeah. issue the entrance in those subdivisions. So then from those portions along Valdell Road is that also will be a requirement for them to put in sidewalk on that front portion. I'm just trying to find a way to cut our money down. That's, that's whatever we decide how we want to proceed with. Future discussion, I'm sorry. Well, it, you're right, it's future discussion uh, to a degree, and it's also the comments you're going to receive from the development. Mm -hmm. Those are the problems that come with growth. <laughs> no argument. You're either man enough or you're not. Thank you. 